All right, so we are going to start today's lecture with the half angle formulas. Uh, we did the double angle and the power reducing last week. Uh, we'll finish up half angles and then we'll do sum to product and product to sum today. Now, it's really important to recognize with the double angle and the half angle formulas, which one to use. Because a lot of people get confused on uh, if I've got cosine of 120, can I use the half angle formula or can I use the double angle formula? Well, since I can write 120 as 2 times 60, that's a double angle. Okay, if you can multiply two times the angle, that's going to be the double angle formula. However, if you've got, you know, cosine of, I don't know, what, let's just say cosine of 90, then I could write that as cosine of 180 divided by 2 and use a half angle formula where my theta or my alpha in this case is going to be 180. This is an example that of course you wouldn't do because, well, you know what cosine of 90 is. You know, there's no reason to do this. But you can. And we can do it to verify that it works. So the formula for sine uh, of alpha over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 2. Notice it's got that plus or minus. That plus or minus is actually it doesn't mean there are two solutions. What it means is it's going to vary depending on what quadrant we're in. We always know that cosine, uh, sine, and tangent are only positive in specific quadrants. So if our theta, uh, our theta over 2 is in quadrant 2, we know that it's going to be the positive version because sine is always positive in the second quadrant. Uh, if theta over 2 is in quadrant 3, then we know it's going to be the negative version. Okay? So, Notice that sine alpha over 2 is 1 minus cosine alpha. Cosine alpha over 2 is 1 plus cosine alpha. And then tangent is 1 minus over 1 plus. Notice that these mirror your uh, power reducing formulas very similarly, right? 1 minus cosine is sine. 1 plus cosine is cosine. And 1 minus cosine, 1 plus cosine is tangent. So they have a lot of similarities in them, and it's because they're derived from you know, each other. So remember, you don't have to memorize them, but it is good to be able to kind of have it in your brain what they are. Right? So if we want to use these formulas, can we use the fact that cosine of 210 is equal to negative root 3 over 2, which we know because it's on our unit circle, can we use that value to find the exact value of the cosine of 105? Well, since I can write 105 as cosine of 210 over 2, right? So that means I can use the cosine version, which is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine. of 210 over 2. Now, we're talking about cosine of 105. What quadrant is 105 in? It's in quadrant 2, right? Because it's bigger than 90, less than 180. Is cosine positive or negative in quadrant 2? It's negative, right? All students so only sine is positive in quadrant 2. So this tells us that we're going to use the negative, not the positive. So I don't need the plus or minus. I just need the minus because of the quadrant we're in. So I know that cosine of 210 is negative root 3 over 2. So I've got negative square root of 1 minus root 3 over 2 all over 2. Now that's a solution. But it's not the simplified solution, right? Because I've got a complex fraction in there. So if I want to get rid of the complex fraction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by that common denominator. Since I've only got one fraction, right? Root 3 over 2 is the only fraction involved in the complex fraction. Then that means that the 2 is going to be the common denominator. So I'm going to multiply each piece by that 2. 
So I'll multiply this by 2, I'll multiply this by 2, and I'll multiply this by 2. So that's going to give me negative square root of 2 minus the square root of 3, right, because that 2 cancels out, and then over 4. Well, I can break that up into two separate radicals, right, and just do the top radical and the bottom radical because I know that the square root of 4 is what? 2. So the top becomes the square root of 2 minus root 3 over 2. And, of course, it's still negative. And that's really all we can do. We've got a radical inside of a radical. It's not pretty, but it is an exact answer. So more than likely, you're going to see this anytime you try to do a half angle formula, you're going to see some kind of radical inside of a radical, okay? Unless you're doing those quadrantal angles that don't involve, or maybe uh, cosine of 60 or sine of 30, you know, that only have one half. So but does that make sense that I can use this formula as long as I can rewrite my angle as a bigger angle divided by two, okay? That's how I know I can use a half angle formula, that I can rewrite it as some angle divided by 2. And it's the sum angle that goes into the formula. Okay? Yes, Zach? Sine of 165 degrees? All right, so you're talking about sine of 165. Okay, so what is 165 times 2? 330. So you're looking at sine of 330 divided by 2. Right? So we know that we're going to rewrite this as plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of 330 over 2. All right, because the sine is 1 minus. Now, 165 is in which quadrant? Second quadrant. Is sine positive or negative in second quadrant? It's positive, so I'm only going to worry about the positive, not the negative. Okay? So that will be positive. So cosine of 330, we look on our unit circle, we see that cosine of 330 is root 2 over 2, uh, and it's positive. So this is going to become 1 minus root 3 over 2, over 2. And then it looks a lot like the last one, right? Same basic form, only it's minus. So we multiply by 2 everywhere. And we get the square root of 2 minus root 3 over 4, which is just square root of 2 minus root 3 over 2. Where'd you check it at? No, that's right. It may just not, it just, it just may not be the form that Mathway liked. You know, it, it may just be in a different. Like this, or like this. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's right, it's not simplified, but it's right. Walt, you got a question? Because it's the square root. So I separated the square root into the top and the bottom. So square root of 4 is just 2. Okay? Yes. Because we had not done the half angle stuff yet, so we couldn't do the double and half angle one. So the tangent one could also be rewritten as 1 minus cosine alpha over sine alpha or sine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. These are just variations on that. Not necessary, uh, but they are variations that you can use. But notice they don't have any radicals in them. 
And that's the thing that we like about it. That's the, the one good thing about these variations is they have no radicals in them. And that's you know, all well and good. It just shows that you, you can get different versions of the same answer that pop up. Okay. Now, that will allow us to do the double angle and half angle homework. Now we want to look at product to sum and sum to product. So we want to be able to use both of these formulas. Here are our product to sum formulas. And what we use product to sum formulas are just what it sounds like. When we want to go from a product, when we're multiplying sine and cosine together or sine and sine together of two different uh, angles into some kind of product where we're adding or subtracting them together. Okay, so sine alpha times sine beta. All of them have the one half, so it's one half of cosine alpha minus beta minus cosine alpha plus beta. So notice that sine and sine gives us cosine and cosine. It's always alpha minus beta, alpha plus beta. Cosine alpha cosine beta gives us cosine cosine. So if both of them are the same, we wind up with two cosines. Okay. The only difference here is sine gives us subtraction, cosine gives us addition. All right. Sine alpha cosine beta will give us sine and sine. Cosine sine gives us sine and sine. Notice that the, the difference here is the alpha plus beta is first, the alpha minus beta is second, and when sine uh, comes first, then uh, it's addition, and when cosine comes first, it's being subtracted. But remember, multiplication is commutative. So really, these are the same thing with just eta, alpha and beta reversed, right? Sine alpha, sine beta, cosine beta, cosine alpha. It's the exact same formula. It just looks a little different because of the, where alpha and beta are, what we're calling alpha and beta. So don't get hung up in that. Really, there's only one formula for this, uh, and you can use either one of them as long as you know which one alpha and which one beta is. So whichever one is first, we always call alpha, and whichever one is second, we always call beta. So it just depends on how you want to do it. So let's look at sine of 5x times the sine of 2x, and we want to convert that from a product to a sum. So we know the formula. sine alpha, sine beta. All right, so we're looking at, they're both sine, so I know that my uh, things are going to be cosine and cosine. I know that we always do with cosine, we do alpha minus beta first, and then alpha plus beta. And I know that sine is always... <coughs> Excuse me, subtraction. So in this example, <coughs> excuse me, sine alpha is sine 5x, so alpha is equal to 5x, beta is equal to 2x. So I'm just going to go through and replace my alpha and my beta. So this is cosine of 5x minus 2x minus cosine of 5x plus 2x. So that's 1 half cosine 3x minus cosine 7x. That's it. No, you can't because they have different arguments. That would be like saying cosine 30 minus cosine 60. You can't really combine them in any meaningful way. But that's a good point to bring up. Make sure we don't do that. This is not 3 cosine x minus 7 cosine x. You know, I can't subtract the 3 minus 7 and get any kind of meaningful uh, thing because those are the 3x and the 7x are the argument. So like I said, it's kind of like saying cosine of 30 minus cosine of 60. You can't combine those unless you know the values. Okay, so that's as far as you can go. 
Right, if it was cosine 3x minus 2 cosine 3x, then yes, they have the same argument, they're like terms, then we could subtract the coefficients, okay? All right, what about cosine 7x cosine x? Well, it's cosine and cosine, so it's going to be cosine and cosine, right? Because anytime they're the same, you've got the one half cosine alpha minus beta plus cosine alpha plus beta. So in this case, alpha is 7x and beta is just x. So we've got cosine of 7x minus x plus cosine of 7x plus x. So that gives us one half cosine 6x plus cosine 8x. They're pretty straightforward. It's a pretty straightforward formula. Anybody have any question on that one? All right, so let's look at the sum to product. So sometimes we want to add or subtract, and instead of doing the addition and subtraction, we want to convert it over into multiplication. So this is when we go from a sum to a product. So notice. Our sum to product formulas are very specific. We can only do it if we're adding two sines or subtracting two sines or adding two cosines or subtracting two cosines. They have to have the same function, okay? I can't do sine alpha plus cosine beta. I don't have a formula for that. So it becomes really important to recognize that. So we're looking at sine alpha plus sine beta gives us 2 times sine alpha plus beta over 2, cosine alpha minus beta over 2. Sine alpha minus sine beta gives us 2 times sine alpha minus beta over 2, cosine alpha plus beta over 2. So notice that it's the same thing, only the alpha plus beta and the alpha minus beta have been swapped. Now cosine, notice we go from uh, having opposite sine and cosine to having the same, cosine and cosine. So if we're adding cosine, then it's cosine alpha plus beta over 2, cosine alpha minus beta over 2. If we're subtracting them, we've got a negative sign, and then we use sine instead of cosine. Now, do y'all see why I don't make you memorize these formulas? My brain is hurting just teaching them to you. So, But it is good to know them. It makes homework go a lot faster if you've done enough of them that you remember the basic formulas. All right, so let's look at sine of 7x plus sine of 3x. So it's sine and sine, so I'm going to know it's going to be sine and cosine. So we've got sine alpha plus sine beta. All right, so that's going to give us 2 times sine of alpha plus beta over 2, sine of alpha minus beta over 2. Cosine, I'm sorry, yeah. Because we got to swap them up with sine. All right, so this is just going to be alpha equals 7x, beta equals 3x bless you, equals 2 times the sine of alpha plus beta, so 7x plus 3x over 2, cosine of 7x minus 3x, over 2. So that's 2 times the sine of 10x over 2 cosine 4x over 2, which is 2 times the sine of 5x cosine 2x. Okay? Now, notice what happens if I try to take this back the other direction. Now, this is product, right? 
So if I want to go back to product to sum, I look for sine cosine. So on our product to sum, sine cosine means that we're going to have one half sine plus sine. So we're going to have one half. Well, what's, yeah, the first thing we've got to do is divide by two, right? Well, let's do this. Let me do this. I'm going to rewrite it as two times this, which is going to be two times that formula, which is one half sine 5x plus 2x. That's not even over nothing. It's just 5x plus 2x plus sine of 5x minus 2x, right? Well, notice the 2's just cancel out, and I just wind up with sine 7x plus sine 3x. But that's what we started with, right? So it did, it did work both ways. <laughs> Which it should. If it doesn't, then we did something completely wrong. Which is not to say that it can't be done, but because I've been known to make mistakes. So let's do cosine plus cosine. So this time, since it's cosine cosine, we know it's going to be cosine alpha plus cosine beta equals 2 times cosine of alpha plus beta over 2 plus cosine alpha minus beta over 2. times, not plus. See? Mistakes. So in this case, alpha is 3x, beta is 2x. So we get 2 times cosine of 3x plus 2x over 2, cosine of 3x plus 2x minus 2x over 2. So that's going to give us 2 times the cosine of 5x over 2 cosine x over 2. And that's it. That's all we can do. All right. Now, where I want to be able to use this, more than just for solving these basic problems, I mean, this is, this is easy, right? I mean, if it's in that form and all I've got to do is look at it and use my formula, that's not really challenging. Where the challenge comes in is when we do things like verifying trig identities that involve the sum to product to product to sum formulas, okay? So if we look at something like that, Say I've got something like cosine alpha plus cosine beta divided by sine alpha minus sine beta equals cotangent alpha minus beta over 2. This is a trig identity, and I want to verify this trig identity. We know our rules for verifying trig identity were laid out for us on that first homework where we do, can we convert everything over to sines and cosines? Can we factor? Can we uh, make fractions into one fraction? Can we split fractions into two fractions? Can we multiply by the conjugate? You know, there are all these, can we cross multiply? There's all this stuff that we can do. Now we're saying we can also use any of these formulas that we've learned up to this point. We might use a double angle formula, we might use a half angle formula, we might use a power reducing formula, we might use a sum to product, product to sum. Any of these formulas are fair game for doing trig identities now. So in this case, I've got cosine alpha plus cosine beta, I've got sine alpha minus sine beta. I can use my sum to product formulas to see if I can make anything cancel out. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by rewriting the cosine alpha 
plus cosine beta as 2 cosine alpha plus beta over 2 uh, cosine alpha minus beta over 2. And then I do the sine alpha minus sine beta as 2 times cosine alpha plus beta over 2 sine alpha minus beta over 2. So what happens? The 2's cancel out. The cosine alpha plus beta over 2 cancels out. Now here I've got cosine over sine of the same argument. So what is cosine divided by sine? Cotangent, right? And since they have the same argument, we can leave it as just cotangent alpha minus beta over 2. And we've proved it just by using those two formulas and canceling out common factors. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to hand out this sheet. This problem is actually one of the problems on the sheet. We're going to work through all seven of these problems now since we did one of them. It's not any of those. It's a different one. This is not part of the homework. This is just work we're going to do in class. Y'all start looking over these, try to work these out. I'll give you a few minutes to start working on them, and we'll try to work them together. Yes, sir. Minus cosine plus, yeah. So just, one half. just make sure that the whole thing is in parentheses, because the one half has to go through, but to both of them, yeah.
No, there's thetas.
even odd property. Cosine of any negative angle is the same as the cosine of a positive angle. It's just an even odd property. Yeah, that's number three. No, it's just multiplication. There's no distribution because it's not addition or subtraction. It's just multiplication. So it doesn't matter what order you write them in. It would be like saying 2 times 4 times 3 times 5. I could write that as 3 times 4 times 2 times 5. It doesn't really matter. You're not distributing the 2 through. Here you're not distributing a sign through because you're not adding or subtracting anything. It's just straight multiplication. And you don't have to write it in any particular order. I just rearranged it. Because it's cosine minus cosine. Cosine minus cosine.
double angle formulas. Remember the double angle of sine is two times sine theta cosine theta. So if I can write that as half, you know, that becomes sine cosine times two. That becomes half sine cosine times two. So I'll end up with an extra four, which gives us negative eight. I just threw that in there to see if I could confuse you completely. Yeah. Anytime you've got a sine of a double angle, we can use a double angle formula, right? There's no reason to do it in this problem because it doesn't ask you to do it, but I just did it. Oops. All right, so let's go back to the beginning and start looking at some of these. So this is number one and number two. So sine of five theta, sine three theta. So that's one half cosine of alpha minus beta, minus cosine of alpha plus beta. So, mm -hmm. so that's going to give us cosine of two theta. This will give us cosine of eight theta. So one half cosine two theta minus cosine eight theta. In theory, you could use double angle formulas for cosine at this point if you wanted to, to make it really complicated and ugly, but no reason to. Because the whole point is just to get it from a product to a sum. That's the only goal we have. We don't, it's not really simplification. We're not trying to do a trig identity here. We're just trying to get from a product to a sum. Same deal here. We've got 9 theta over 2, cosine theta over 2. So the formula for cosine cosine is 1 half cosine plus cosine. So we subtract here, 9 theta minus theta gives us 8 theta over 2. 9 theta plus theta is 10 theta over 2. So we wind up with 1 half cosine 4 theta plus cosine 5 theta. No conceptual work here. This is all just plug and chug, right? You've got the formula. You just plug the values in. Now number three is more simplify it. What can I do with it? So I've got sine times sine plus sine. Now there are a couple of things you could do here. You could distribute the sine through. Then you would have, you know, sine theta, sine four theta, plus sine theta, sine six theta. Then do product to sum on both of them. And then add all things together. Or you can do like I did and do a sum to product here and then just multiply everything. So here we've got sine 4 theta plus sine 6 theta. The formula for that is 2 times the sine of the adding them together times the cosine of subtracting them. So it's important to note here on these next two problems something that happens. When we do 4 theta plus 6 theta we get 10 theta over 2. But when we do 4 theta minus 6 theta we get negative 2 theta over 2. Right, so 10 theta over 2 gives us the 5 theta. Negative 2 theta over 2 gives us negative theta. But at that point, we have cosine of negative theta. We need to use an even odd property. Anytime we take the sine or cosine or tangent of a negative angle, we need to use our even odd property to either eat it or pull it out. Okay. In this case, since we're talking about cosine, that's an even function. So it's just going to absorb the minus sign and it'll just go away. Okay, Because cosine of negative theta is the same thing as cosine of positive theta. So from here to here, I just lose that minus sign because cosine is an even function. And the rest of it I just rewrite. And I rewrote the whole thing putting the 2 on the front. Since this is just all multiplying things together, it doesn't matter what order you write them in. Convention tells us that we generally put coefficients on the front. So I do it. OK? Mm -hmm. oh. Now number 8, there are multiple ways of doing because you have three things being added together. So I only did two of them, but there's actually another way of doing it as well. So 1 minus cos cosine 2 theta plus cosine 6 theta minus cosine 8 theta. So I associated the cosine 6 theta and the minus cosine 8 theta. So I'm looking at these two, and I'm going to change that uh, into negative 2 sine of the addition, sine of the subtraction. So when I do that, 6 theta plus 8 theta gives us uh, 14 theta over 2 is 7 theta. 6 theta minus 8 theta is negative 2 theta over 2, which is negative theta. So now sine is an odd function, right? 
So that means that minus sign gets pulled out front. So that minus becomes positive, and that minus becomes positive. So we get plus 2 times the sine of 7 theta sine theta. Now at that point, there's really nothing else I can do. Another way I did it was by associating the cosine 2 theta and the cosine 6 theta. I started by factoring that minus sign out, making the cosine positive and the cosine negative here. So I wind up with cosine minus cosine, which is negative 2 sine addition, sine subtraction. Same formula as it was up here. We have the same thing happen. The 2 plus 6 gives us 8 theta over 2, which is 4 theta. 2 theta minus 6 theta is negative uh, 4 theta over 2, which gives us that negative 2 theta. So since sine is an odd function, I can pull the minus sign out, change that to a plus. So we still have 1 minus 2 sine 4 theta sine 2 theta minus cosine 8 theta. Either one of those is correct. Just two different ways of doing the same problem. And we could actually verify that that's the same. We could pick a theta. Say we let theta be pi over 4, or 45 degrees. What happens if I plug in theta? I get 1 minus cosine of 90 plus 2 times the sine of 7 times 45, 35, 3, 7 times 28, 315, sine of 45. All right, so what's cosine of 90? Uh, zero. zero. What's sine of 315? Uh, negative root 2 over 2. And the sine of 45? Uh, All right. So we wind up with 1 plus here, that 2 and that 2 will cancel out. This negative root 2 and this ne uh, positive root 2 will become negative 2. This 2 is just 2, so we have 1 minus 1 gives us 0. All right, well, let's see if it cancels out on the bottom. 1 minus 2 times the sine of, what's 4 times 45? 180 sine of 90 minus cosine of 8 times 45 is 90 times 4 is that 360? Well here sine of 180 is 0 so that middle part just goes to 0 cosine of 360 is 1 so I have 1 minus 1 is 0 yeah, they both wound up canceling out to zero, so looks like I've done it right. That's not a strictly necessary step, of course. That's just something I did to verify that those two things were the same. Okay? So now we look at six. Six is an identity. Hey, who said that Janet told me. Oh, no. You told me that because I asked you about it, but I don't remember who said it. I'm assuming it was maintenance, but that was just my assumption. <laughs> All right. So we start by converting the cosine 9 theta minus cosine 3 theta using our uh, sum to product form. We notice that the negative 2 sine 9 theta plus 3 theta over 2 becomes 6 theta. Sine 9 theta minus 3 theta over 2 becomes sine of 3 theta. The 2's cancel out, the sine 6 theta's cancel out, all you're left with is negative sine 3 theta, and that's what you wanted. 4 and 5, of course, are just plug and chug with uh, subtraction of cosine and cosine, sine and sine. You should be able to do those without any problem. Right? All right, anybody have any questions about any of that? All right, then we will turn in the homework that's due today uh, before you leave. And if you turn it in late, that's okay. I'm going to dock points off. I'm going to take 25% off like I do with any homework if you turn it in late. Uh, but I will accept it late. 
up through uh, next Wednesday. Okay, all homework has to be turned in up by Wednesday. This homework will be due on Monday. Okay, so we're going to do the double angle, half angle formulas, the product to sum, and sum to product formulas. Okay. That do not work. I sure do. The ones that'll be due Monday are the double and half angle, sum to product, product to sum. Okay. There's a stapler up here, yeah. <laughs>